Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be taking a canoe tour of Old Woman Creek National Estuary. So an estuary by definition is two bodies of water combining to make a third body that's separate, separate than the other two. Traditionally, that is like brackish water where salt water meets fresh water. Uh, this is kind of uh, kind of its own thing. This is the waters of Lake Erie and the waters of Old Woman Creek up ahead form an estuary. It's actually different water. I don't know. I guess at a biology level, it must be its own thing. But for me and you, this is just a great way to get into some unique water. It is protected water. This is permit only access and there is a ton of wildlife around here a bunch of bald eagles uh, it's kind of its own little unique ecosystem so i thought i'd take the day uh, try out some new paddles that i've just carved uh, get on the water and explore a little bit of this preserve so old woman creek is a 573 acre national estuary and it's parallel in the road right now, so you're going to be hearing some of the road noise. But there is no uh, motor boat traffic through here. This is canoe or kayak only uh, by permit. So they really limit who's coming in here. And for the super observant, uh, this is a different battle than the first one I had in the beginning of the video. I just carved up a bunch of paddles and I'm just out here testing them all out, getting them wet before I take them on a bigger trip. And the current is actually pretty darn strong and the wind's pretty strong. Right this second it's died down. Uh, if I get in the wrong channel at the wrong time, the canoe gets blowed over pretty quickly. and. Again, I'm out of it right this second, but the current is driving us north pretty hard here. So as you're waiting for me to break into open water just up ahead, take a second and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and click like on this video, leave me a comment, and you can hook up with me as well on Instagram and Facebook at Burning River Bushcraft. I have a blog, burningriverbushcraft.com. If you're interested in any of the courses I teach at Outdoor Core, uh, you can follow a link in the description below and you can take those. So I was trying to get through a small channel here and I just came around a corner on the river and the, uh, the wind picked up and I was going sideways pretty hard and it set me into a, oh, a bunch of these giant lily pads and there ain't much paddling through these things. You could almost walk on this. And this was not my intention to go through these. I'm trying to avoid all the native foliage as possible but in this case I don't have a lot of options there we go you can tell probably from the background I'm getting blown sideways again and you can see I got another pedal <laughs> I have a whole canoe load of paddles today. This is a uh, tulip poplar. This is a one piece tulip poplar. I had to laminate a little thicker handle shaft on it. The water level is pretty high here at the estuary. I could tell that just because I almost had to duck going under the bridge. Uh, Lake Erie is high anyway for the last few years. A lot of the beaches and stuff have washed out. As far as vegetation, this is uh, September. So I assume the vegetation would have been worse, but it's pretty high right now. There's not a lot of open channels to paddle through. 
uh, over on my left here. This is Star Island. Boy, I'm busting waterfowl all over this estuary. This is uh, a lot of uh, habitat right here. Pretty impressive. Definitely a very, very impressive area. You can tell there's not many people here. Uh, the navigation is just not that easy. This is uh, not a leisurely place to go for a paddle. This is more a place to go botanize or to view wildlife or to paddle in the wind. If you enjoy that kind of thing. So as I mentioned before, I'm using an assortment of paddles that I made. This is a uh, tulip poplar paddle. I've got the one that I did the 107 mile, the pine otter tail. I've got a cedar otter tail with me today. I'm just out here getting some pictures and putting a little, putting a little bit of time in with these paddles on the water. This is a pine beaver tail style. And I've got a little different grip here. This is more of a grip I like to use on a longer term trip where my hand kind of cramps up in one position and I'm looking to just modify the hold I'm doing somewhat. And I've also got uh, one that I just laminated together here. The pine and the tulip poplar were single board laminations. This is a three board lamination. So I've got cedar, black walnut and tulip poplar and the grip on this one is laminated uh, black walnut on the cedar shaft here and this was all just junk this was just cut off pieces these are old knife scales this is off the tulip poplar paddle this is uh, the cedar that I had had a lot of knots in it so I was able to cut like an inch and a quarter piece out of this and get it all glued together so I'm just out here finishing up a course I'm teaching on at Door Core. I am teaching uh, carving your own canoe paddle. We do this whole thing with just an axe, a rasp, a knife, and some sandpaper on the basic one piece wooden paddle. When we get to the laminate paddles, you know, then we're starting to use clamps and glue and uh, saws to cut out our pieces to glue them together so we have square edges. But our basic paddle like this one right here. This was all done just with an axe, uh, axe and a rasp. I used a knife very, very little on this. Uh, and then uh, it's a lot of sanding. But if that's something you're interested in taking, uh, it's a great skill to know. First off, if you were to break or lose a paddle out of middle of nowhere, just to be able to make your own paddle. Again, I got the wind fighting me here. But uh, just to be able to make your own paddle, is a great wilderness skill. It's a great woodworking skill and it lets me switch to the proper paddle like right now I'm bogged down in the lily pads again and I'm going to switch over to a shallow water beaver tail that's going to give me a little more propulsion here. Uh, I've got about 50 yards of this and I break out of it so hopefully it's a short stretch. But you can make your paddles custom made to you you can make uh, one for your stern paddler, one for your bow paddler. And when they wear out, uh, what kind of awesome uh, thing is this to hang on your wall? A canoe paddle that you made yourself and you've paddled for 500 miles or 1,000 miles or whatever you can get out of this thing. But this is as good as a commercially available paddle. I think most commercially available one-piece paddles are probably in the $60 range. I've seen them for a lot more, but I'm being on the low side here. So for the cost of this course, you can uh, you know, carve out $200 worth of paddles real quick, real soon, just with common material from a lumber yard and an ax, a rasp, and a knife. So it's been a fun day here on uh, Old Woman Creek Estuary. 
This is probably a must do if you're a nature lover. I mean, it's pretty cool here. This is definitely a micro environment, uh, undisturbed for the most part. It's, uh, it's pretty unique. Uh, not something I would do if you're just a hardcore paddler and want to get out there and put miles on or do something like that. But uh, every environment's different, and this is a great way to practice getting through an extremely thick lily beds and navigating around down trees and stuff. There's nothing really where you're going to get out and get stuck. The uh, yeah, the water's maybe four and a half, five feet, something like that. And I haven't really hit any hardcore obstructions. Uh, I'd hit some logs that I kind of got to back up and go around that I couldn't see in the lily pads. But the vegetation is just thick. It is ridiculously thick. I would say maybe wintertime would be my first choice of coming here. Or early winter, I guess. This would probably freeze up pretty early. But it's a unique place that is accessible really only by canoe or kayak and as I mentioned before this is canoe country right here this is exactly why I would choose a canoe over a kayak very narrow paths to get through the vegetation if any paths to get through the vegetation if you uh, were in this with a double paddle you are going to be kicking up pads pretty darn easy I mean I'm really struggling through some of this but it's uh, completely navigable, and it is worth it. You get the sense that you're further away than you are. I've got a major highway just to the north of me here, and there's, you know, there's a lot of people around this area. This is actually a, like a state research center in this estuary as well. So it's not uninhabited by any means, but it is protected, and it is. Uh, definitely get the feeling like you're out there by yourself so this thick vegetation is a pain but this is kind of prepping me for my upcoming 99 mile wilderness trip through the Everglades uh, planning that this uh, winter winter spring so if I don't like paddling through this stuff I sure ain't gonna like going through the swamp of the Everglades so it's mostly smooth paddling from here on in. I'm gonna try to go real calm and quiet through here. And uh, I see quite a bit of wildlife up ahead. So till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with the Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.